So today is a video that um, I was going to do, I, I've been wanting to make it for a while now. It's a very important video and it's a video that really needs to get, really needs to get made and made in a good way, you, I guess I can say. Um, because it's a very important process, especially with keeping puffer fish and especially keeping an Amazon like I have. Um, as you guys know, all puffer fish, they have teeth. They, they, if you look at rabbit teeth, they're almost like that, but they'll, the most of the time they'll grow at a point. So kind of like our canines, that's how kind of their front teeth grow. Um, and they'll have two of them, but they're, you know, they, they look like one tooth. And big puffers, small puffers, they all their teeth, they all have teeth and they all grow. And most of the time to prevent that, you probably heard, feed them snails, feed them, you know, hard foods like clams maybe, and snails, you know, and then you give them the, you know, the variety like blood worms, mice, shrimp, stuff like that, any frozen food really. And that should keep their teeth trimmed, you know, for the meantime. But at a certain point, especially with like Amazon like I have, their teeth grow so fast. Um, now, it, it, you, you're probably going to do this process one to two times a year, so it's not like that fast. But still, it's a process that nobody wants to do, and it has to be done. And for an Amazon puffer, there's no choice. Um, and mine, the teeth are getting to the point. I think it, it would be fine for another couple months, but I decided to do it now. I think it's a perfect time to make a video about it. Um, so, what's, you know, before we talk too long, this is kind of set up. Um, don't mind this, it's just holding the airline, this deodorant. But what we got here is if you have a bigger puffer, this is totally going to change. You're probably going to need um, something way bigger, obviously. And the lights just changed on. Um, but what you need is two buckets. One, both of them need tank water, that's for sure. One of them needs to be the one that you put it back in. One needs to be with the one with the clove oil. Now, clove oil, what is that? Clove oil is this stuff. Now, there's different varieties, so, you know, you, you don't... You don't have to use just this, but this is like, I've heard, you know, the best stuff. And it's really popular of what, you know, I guess you can quote unquote professionals use. So it's by Red Cross. It's it's actually, as you know, it's for tooth, tooth um, ache and, you know, pain relief, I guess. But it puts, it puts um, fish to sleep. All you need to know when you're buying this stuff, it needs to be, have, um, you know, ethanol oil in it and that's the stuff that puts it fish to sleep but you don't need all this crap all you need is the actual oil itself and how this works i know nobody discuss um how to actually do this so that's why i'm doing it so two containers uh, make sure for puffers like my size put um, three cups of water in each container of tank water three cups and then what you want to do is do three drops of clove oil only in one though and that's going to be the one with the air stone now after you Okay, when you put your puffer in here, keep the airstone in while, you know, it gets flipped over and goes to sleep for a good minute. And then when you're done trimming it, put it in here and then switch the airstone to this one. Um, just so the water can get oxygen and the fish can get oxygen at the same time because it's kind of in a slump right now and it can't really control itself. Now, the reason we put it back in another container is because if we put a, a sleep, I guess, you know, put the sleep fish back in a tank that's this, you know, tall... What's going to happen is, you know, they can't control them swimming, so they're going to sink all the way to the bottom. Well, yeah, they're going to go come back, um, come back alive, basically, and they're going to start swimming again. But the, you just don't want to take risks with this stuff because what could happen is, you know, there's so much pressure. There's going to be less pressure on them with this depth of water than there is with this depth of water. Like, this is, you know, a good... 15 inches of water all that pressure is pushing down on that fish while it's sitting here at the bottom and that's no good for them and with expensive very expensive fishes like this you don't really want to risk it and no more than it is to fill another container up and just wait for it to wake back up and then place it back in the tank it's much more safer so i'd really recommend that you need to clean the glass off but the tank's looking really good i did a 50 percent water change the other day and I really love the tank without a lid because it just looks way more better. I love seeing the ripples on the top. But Amazon's jump, so you got to keep, you know, a glass lid on there. But I'm going to net the fish and put the olive clove oil in there, and I'll go from there. 
So what I just did is I opened the cap. This doesn't have a little thing to measure. So what I did is fill up the cap and kind of just lightly tip it to where like little drops will come out. So I put three drops in there um, and you know the three, the three cups we put in here. So if you have more than that, then you can just do the math. But be really careful with this because I don't really know the risk of overdosing this. I mean, I'm assuming it can do some harm. So we're just going to let that mix up kind of to get a little... This stuff does stink a little bit, so you're definitely going to smell it on you for for the rest of the day, that's for sure. But I'm going to net the, the puffer and put them in, and I'll give you guys the update. So I just in inserted the puffer fish, and immediately... He has already basically put to sleep. Now he's gonna look like he's dead. Don't worry. He he. Wait until he flips upside down until his belly is facing you, and then neatly get your net and grab him inside the net. And what you're gonna do is get this tool. Now, if you guys want to know where to buy tools like this, you can ask me down in the comments, and I'll give you guys a link to you know some of the good ones. But just like fingernails. Their teeth are literally just like our fingernails. You're going to just cut them with this tool. This tool is just really strong so it can cut it really fast and easily. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to hurry up and cut this too, just like a nail. Just slice it, but you want to cut the tooth right right level with its lips. Just right under its lips, just so it doesn't get it. Basically, so the teeth aren't exposed no more, and that's what you want to do. So, as we see here... Yeah, he's asleep. So I'll come back. Okay, I'm going to scoop him out. Just like this. I know you can't see it that well, but you just lightly grip him. I won't be able guys to show you guys it very well. I know you can't see me doing it right now, but it's it's a process I don't want to mess up. So I just got done trimming its teeth and definitely very hard. It is not an easy process. I just put him back in. He's still kind of floating around. It looks like his fins are kind of waking up. They're kind of moving, but. Yeah, definitely a scary process. It does look, I mean, he, he looks like he's dead right now, but we should see what happens. Hope everything goes well. The teeth trimming, I definitely, I definitely got his teeth cut. Not as good as I really wanted to, but they're definitely trimmed down like way better than what they were. So he's definitely gonna be fine for months now. But I definitely think I have to come in for a second trim eventually. But I did see his mouth move, so it looks like he is slowly waking up. Kind of focus on him. It's a very fast process, but I, ha I had him out of the water for about two minutes. Um, obviously dunking him in every few seconds. But definitely, it's definitely a process not for everybody. It's de I can see why people are scared to do it, but, you know, I kind of had to step up and, you know, I wanted to keep this fish. So if I wanted to keep it, I have to do what it takes to care for it and... If that's, you know, putting this thing to sleep and trimming its teeth, that's what I'll have to do. And it, so far, you know, it's, I guess we can call it a surgery. Surgery went well. Operation went well. We'll call it a, we'll call it a, a success when he wakes up, but he's still kind of floating around. I did ha I did have him in... He wasn't in the bowl of ethanol for that long, but he was out of the water for, he was still, it's not like he was out of the water just drying up, but he was out of the water a little bit longer than I wanted to. 
But yeah, definitely that bear there. So I was blowing him around. It, he's gonna be like this for about a minute to two minutes. So I'm definitely gonna pause this, and when he starts actually kind of like somewhat swimming, I'll you know come back to you guys. And one more thing, um, um, sorry for not actually filming the trimming. I was trying to maybe get switch the camera on where it's force um like put it over here and make it towards me so you guys can somewhat kind of see what i'm doing but it was very hard as it is so i don't think i was going to even able to film it unless i had a cameraman that would have been different but there was no way i was going to be able to film while trying to um do this so if you guys really wanted to see how it was trimmed my bad there was just no way but if you want to see it done there is a video there is a couple good videos on youtube of t puffer trimming so you can kind of see how i did it but as long as you do it how i did it you know with with this tool you kind of you know hold it kind of like this and you know just you know just kind of a obviously when you pull its teeth it's just straightforward and make sure you know you get it just right under the lip you know just kind of even with its bottom lips and it does have bottom teeth too um obviously cutting the top ones are a little more important just make sure if you can at least cut the top ones off and you don't want to hurt it just put it do it like i did and just hurry up and put them back and let them be i mean as long as you get them cut and where he can uh, eat that's you know that's that's what matters but um but definitely for the first time it's definitely it's definitely not an easy process doing it for the first time but he is breathing i can see his stomach like going back and forth and his mouth moving so he should yeah he's definitely We'll kind of move this airstone out of here. Because that airstone might have a, a ethanol kind of on it. So that might, it might be keeping them, keeping them asleep and we don't want that. Maybe I'll put them, maybe I'll net them and kind of let them just like sit at the surface of the tank. That's probably what I'll do right now. So I kind of have him, shoot. Okay. So I kind of have him in the net here. Right when I put him back in this water, he actually started springing back up and tried to, he tried to jump. So he's definitely, he's alive. He just doesn't know what's going on right now. But. Probably best to kind of keep him with a flow coming so he can get some oxygen kind of going through. Going through his gills or mouth. But he's, he's slowly getting there. I think I did put a little, just a tad bit more ethanol, so he might be asleep for, you know, a minute or two longer. But he should be springing back up. Once I start, start seeing him actually, like, swimming, that's when I'll just release him. Let him just kind of do his own thing. But let's just get kind of a personal close-up to the Amazon Puffer. You never get to really see him up close like this unless you're doing procedures like this. You can kind of see he's moving. His fins are still kind of like clamped onto his body, so he's still kind of in shock. You know, first time of a fish doing something like this, it's kind of don't know what's happening to his body. But if you guys are watching this and you don't know, you know, exactly all about this, 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 this is totally safe. You kind of have to do this to keep um, a puffer like this healthy. Um, ethanol does not hurt the fish whatsoever. Um, if anything, you can hurt the fish more than the ethanol will, so something to keep in mind. Before we just stay at this buffer, I'm just going to kind of do the same thing, kind of bring you back, guys back when he's like swimming. <clears throat> and just like that, operation, operation trimming teeth was successful he is now moving he's trying to fight out this bag but just like that he just kind of woke up shook his fins and now he wants he's all playful again trying to nip at me hey kind of keep him in his net for you know maybe another minute just to kind of make sure he's doing well but yeah i mean if you guys have any other questions i know i kind of I briefly went over some of this. I mean, I, I definitely did better than probably some people explained it. I mean, definitely definitely when it comes to, you know, how to actually dose the clove oil and 
you know what they actually do most people just show them actually most people just show trimming the teeth only so i think i did a little bit better but you know this is basically a little how to but if you have any other questions definitely ask me because i know i didn't get everything possible i could um but definitely we're going to be doing this twice a year maybe once a once I start really getting getting him on a snail diet, um, most likely once a year. But every time I'll trim his teeth, I'll make a video on it. Because um, I'll probably get better and better every time I do it. This first time was kind of... It, it was it was way harder than I thought it would be. But, you know, we at least got his teeth trimmed and that's what matters. But other than that, accessible operation and... I guess that's it. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys.